Good morning, Iowa. It is five o'clock on your Tuesday, November 7th. This is a live look outside right now. Dark out there. It's going to feel colder when you step outside this morning. Yesterday was so nice. Did you yeah. get outside? Sunday? Yeah, I did yesterday and it was very, very nice yesterday. But as you look uh, at that live look over downtown Des Moines there, Brandon, it looks calm, but it is just a little bit colder than it was yesterday. Yeah, temperatures about a couple of minutes. All right, thank you, Brandon. 501 is your time. Here's a live look at your traffic here. Uh, we are taking a look in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Urbandale, as well as Ankeny. Things looking very good out there at this time. As I check with Iowa DOT, all lanes, all directions open at this time. Turning to your voice, your vote at 501. Today is Election Day in Iowa, and we are getting you ready this morning. Local 5 is on your side with everything you need to know before you do. So here are three things to know this morning. Poll is open starting at 7 a.m. and stay open until 8 p.m. DART is also offering free rides to the poll locations and absentee ballots cannot be turned into your polling location, but you can hand them into the county auditor's office. All absentee ballots must be turned in by the time the polls close tonight. And one of the biggest races this year is for Des Moines new mayor. The winner is replacing Frank County, who has been mayor for the last 20 years. County announced just days before the filing deadline he would not be running for reelection. That means the job will go to one of the four candidates running. Local 5's Larissa Miller is in studio this morning with more on each of those candidates. Good morning, Larissa. Good morning, Shanoon Samantha. Connie Bozen. <laughs> In Local 5 politics this morning, Governor Kim Reynolds is officially endorsing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for president just months before the Iowa caucuses. Now, Reynolds joined DeSantis at his rally in Des Moines Monday night. In picking DeSantis, she says something needs to be done to, quote, get this country back. It's the first time a top elected official in Iowa has endorsed a presidential candidate since 1996. Donald Trump is leading in the polls among likely Republican caucus goers. Before her endorsement, he criticized Reynolds, calling her disloyal. And after the official endorsement Monday night, he called Reynolds, quote, America's most unpopular governor. And sticking with Trump news this morning, he is off the witness stand in his fraud trial. Tomorrow, his daughter Yvonne. New information at 5.07, the Marshalltown Mall remains dark due to unpaid electric bills. Local 5 has confirmed the main mall doors are closed, but stores with outside access can remain open. Cohen Retail Investment in New York owns multiple malls across the state. We have reached out to them, but have not heard back. We also contacted the Marshalltown Fire Marshal on how long he may let those stores stay open because of no power. It's 508. The state of Iowa will pay $10 million to the siblings of an adopted 16 year old girl who died of starvation in 2017. Sabrina Ray was severely malnourished when officers found her body in Perry. Ray lived with three other adoptive siblings as well as foster siblings. The Iowa Senate Democrats reacted to this settlement, releasing a statement saying they hope the settlement offers comfort to the siblings. A major studio shared what they call their last, best, and final offer. The Actors Union says it's reviewing this offer. Members of SAG-AFTRA were back on the picket lines Monday. Both sides met Saturday, which is when the offer was presented. No details of that offer have been revealed. SAG-AFTRA members are fighting for their fair share of streaming revenues and higher pay. All right, getting right into 510 this morning. Brandon, taking a look uh, as we step outside today, it is feeling colder, feeling uh, getting closer to November. It is, yeah, but we are still going to be fairly warm during 60s. All right, some of those 60s still lingering around. Thanks, Brandon. All right, 510, a heads up this morning as you get ready. One lane of University from 17th to 18th Streets, that will be shut down in Des Moines as we piloted right here for you, kind of near Kiowa there. So it will be from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. through Thursday. Crews are shutting down that lane to repair the sidewalk. This is right by Good Park. All right, let's get a live look at your traffic outside right now. This is in Des Moines, I-8035 and Merle Hay Road there. And road conditions looking good outside this morning. As you can see, everyone moving along right now with no issues to report. As I checked with Iowa DOT maps just a few minutes ago, all lanes, all directions cleared at this time. No issues to report. All right, the Verify team looks into claims on if people making less than $400,000 will get audited more frequently.
In this morning's Verify, the IRS is working to hire more tax enforcement staff in a viral social media post claims it could mean more audits for people making less than $400,000. Verify's Brandon Lewis looks into the post. On October 20th, this pattern's for you. All right, I think you are making some people's day, Brandon. Thank you. 519 is your time. Here's a live look at traffic in Windsor Heights. I-235 at 63rd Street there. And look at that. Uh, pretty clear out there this morning for your Tuesday Election Day commute. Everything looking good. DOT right now not reporting any issues. So I will continue to update you on your traffic right here in Good Morning Iowa and help you and your family plan that morning commute. Looking good. Thank you. A historic evening at Carver Hawkeye Arena for the Iowa women's basketball team. A banner was raised to honor an unforgettable season. Yeah, the first game that counts since the national championship. So let's start, of course, with Caitlin Clark. Uh, as you can see here, they're really getting ready for that game to tip off there. And Caitlin Clark, fall away jumper. Surprised by that? Not really, right? So now Clark uh, getting into the paint. No contest against her, but, you know, she can uh, dish a few dimes, too. She can pass. So ahead to Kate Martin. Martin had eight points. The Hawks are rolling big time. And now Caitlin Clark from the logo and the foul and one. Clark finishes with 28, 10, and 7. Nearly a triple double in the first game of the season. A 102 46 win. Major win. The Hawks are 1 0 this morning. The Iowa State women also tipped their season Monday morning with an 82-55 win over Butler. The Cyclones had five true freshmen play over 15 minutes in that win. All right, we got a live look this morning. Low to mid-50s. All right, thank you, Brandon. 526 is your time. Here's a live look at traffic. This is West Des Moines at the West Mixmaster there. As you can see, the cars moving along fine this morning, but you do notice some of those orange signs. There's some construction out that way, so just uh, keep an eye out for crews that are working out that way. But overall, though, no crashes, no lane closures to report at this time. Thank you. Iowa. Good morning, Iowa. Happy Tuesday. Happy Election Day to all of you. Getting right into the 530 half hour of Good Morning Iowa. A live look there right over downtown Des Moines this morning. And as you take a look, Brandon, things pretty calm out there. We had a beautiful day yesterday. We did. Almost felt like uh, like like summer's not going away, right? Yeah. Yeah. but it was pretty warm. But today uh, feeling a little different outside. Little bit cooler, yeah. but still pretty nice yeah. this afternoon. There are no excuses weather wise full of minutes. All right, thank you, Brandon. 531 is your time. Here's a live look at traffic here in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Altoona, as well as Urbandale. Things pretty clear for your Tuesday morning commute. Not a whole lot to complain about. As you can see, their road conditions looking good. Checking with Iowa DOT right now. They are not reporting any crashes or lane closures, but I will continue to keep an eye on traffic for you, helping your family plan your commute this morning. All right, turning now to your voice, your vote at 531. Today is Election Day in Iowa, and we are helping you get ready this morning. Local 5 is on your side with everything you need to know before you head to the polls. So here are three things to know. Polls open starting at 7 a.m. and stay open until 8 p.m. DART is also offering free bus rides to those polling locations. Absentee ballots, keep in mind, cannot be turned into your polling location, but you can hand them into the county auditor's office. All absentee ballots must be turned in by the time the polls close tonight. And today, people are casting their votes for a race that was not originally set to be on the ballot. A special election in Des Moines for City Council Ward 1 opened up after sitting Councilwoman Deer Shoemaker resigned at the beginning of September. Now, before that, she was absent. Now, six people are running to fill her seat. Local 5's Larissa Millis joins us in studio this morning. And Larissa, you've been looking into these candidates. What more can you tell us? Yeah, good morning, guys. The race for Des Moines, Samantha. All right, and with just a little more than two months until the Iowa caucuses, Governor Kim Reynolds says it's now time for Iowans to make the right choice. That's after her announcement to endorse Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for president at a rally on Monday. Now, the DNC also responded, releasing a statement saying, quote, doubling down on their shared MAGA agenda won't revive DeSantis's floundering campaign. And Reynolds' endorsement comes as we are one year out from the 2024 election, and the recent ABC News poll shows 76% of Americans think the country is heading in the wrong direction. Those numbers also show some people want the top candidate to be someone other than President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. The Biden campaign says it's 
not worrying about polling numbers, confident he'll win re-election. Trump's campaign is praising rising numbers, saying it's focusing on individual states to win the Republican nomination and the election. The third GOP debate is in Miami tomorrow. So far, six candidates have qualified and five will be in attendance. Those candidates you see there, Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, and Tim Scott will all take the stage. Now, Trump did qualify for the debate, but says he will not take part. An update this morning, prosecutors have filed charges against a man for shooting at a Des Moines police officer. That's all according to Des Moines police. It's a story we f A recaller at 537 this morning, Ford is recalling nearly 188,000 Mustangs because of an issue with the brakes. So the affected models years are from 2020 to 2023. This issue stems from the brake fluid level sensor that may not turn on when you're low on brake fluid. No injuries have been reported so far. Ford says a free software update fixes the issue that can be done at the dealership. The company will start notifying customers early next month. All right, 538, a live look there at Sky Tracker 5 right over downtown Des Moines. You see the Capitol peeking over there in the corner. Brandon, hard to believe that uh, around this time last week it was pretty cold. It was almost a complete opposite. Yeah, Halloween was last Tuesday, yeah. and we only had highs in the low to mid 30s. So next week. All right, sounds good, Brandon. 539 is your time. A live look at traffic here. I-235 at 42nd Street in Des Moines. And hey, good news continues on the road, right? Road conditions looking good. No crashes, no lane closures to report at this time. But hey, I'll continue to keep an eye on the traffic for you. Update you right here on Good Morning Iowa as you make plans to get to work, get to school, or get out to the polls. Your time right now, 541. A West Des Moines man is thanking those who stepped in to save his life after suffering a sudden cardiac arrest. Brad Feldman, a fuck you through, saving his life on the phone. Right. And yeah, and those operators, I think, oftentimes don't get the uh, credit that they deserve. Because Definitely to be not. able to sit there and calmly speak to someone who may Calmly panicking. being the key yeah. there because, you know, they also want to make sure that that person is safe. Yeah. But think about that, too pretty quick yeah. looking like a nice day so hey no excuses to uh, get out to the polls this morning 546 is your time uh, taking a live look at traffic here at Ankeny I-35 at Corporate Woods Drive everyone moving along great this morning as you can see things picking up a little bit out there but as I check with Iowa DOT it looks like all lanes all directions still clear at this time I haven't seen any crashes or lane closures so far this morning hoping it stays that way uh, as you get ready for your Tuesday morning the commute looks good road conditions also looking good so I'll continue to track your traffic right here on Good Morning Iowa Today is election day in Iowa. The polls open in a little more than an hour and a big topic are just efforts to make sure your vote is safe when casting your ballot. So joining me this morning is Secretary of State Paul Pate. Uh, just thank you so much for being here with us. I know it's a busy, busy day for you guys. So, you know, of course, election security is always something that we discuss when we get close to an election. Uh, what is one thing voters can do today to just make sure that their ballots are protected? Well, we want to make, make them successful. So yeah. we want to make sure they have a good plan. And, and uh, the best thing I can suggest is just formulate when you want to go vote today. Yeah. Go online maybe to voterready.iowa.gov. Make sure the voter registration is current. Uh, bring that ID with you, typically mm -hmm. at the driver's license. Know your polling site and uh, you know come on in and, and uh, make sure you've done your research a little bit before you go in to vote because yeah. in Polk County, you've got a few things on the ballot. Yeah. I know your office, you stay busy for most of the year to just make sure that elections are secure. So what are just a few things that your office does to make sure that voters are protected? Well, we've got several cyber issues. We have a lot of uh, screening going on, constantly monitoring to make sure yeah. nobody is invading. Uh, a lot of uh, firewalls and technical components. But the, the real issue is we have voter ID to make sure it's the real person coming in to vote. Yeah. And we've got that secret weapon, and that's your friends and neighbors who are poll workers. Uh, they're there every step of the way. We want that transparency because we need you to have confidence that your vote is being handled properly. Yeah, and I know all your efforts, uh, they, they don't go unnoticed. There is proof that Iowa elections are secure. So I remember uh, uh, you wrote an op-ed after the 2020 elections pointing to research and data that 
Iowa had the third most secure election right. uh, in the country at that time after the 2020 elections. Um, have you guys seen any difficulties as far as election security since then? Well, there's always bad actors who yeah. try to you know, outsmart the system, so we have to be vigilant. It's a race without a finish line, yeah. so we're never going to let our guard down. That's why we partner with everybody from uh, the FBI, Homeland Security, our own security experts, as well as our local county jurisdictions. Yeah. In a partnership, we're ready to push them back. Have any of the new legislation regarding election security made it difficult for you guys? No, we, we've actually, I think, done a better job because we have much cleaner processes and, again, that transparency. Uh, it's so crucial. And we're one of the states that can, can honestly say we have poll workers. We have people who want to help us at the polling sites. Yeah. That's a good thing to have. Have you guys been able to uh, recruit enough poll workers for all the different counties? I'm very pleased. We've got over 10,000 poll workers working statewide and, and plenty more coming, and we, we appreciate their service. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by today. I know it's going to be a busy day for you guys. So uh, best of luck to everything. And uh, thank you for stopping by. All right. Brandon, thank you. 556 is your time alive. Look at traffic. I-235 at East 12th Street there in Des Moines. And it is a slow start to your Tuesday morning. But hey, you know what? All lanes, all directions cleared for your commute if you are planning to head out. Uh, as we inch closer to 6 o'clock, I'll continue to track your traffic for you right here. And good morning, Iowa. Help you plan that morning commute. Great start today.